Hey everyone, Scott J.U.A. from Crucible Custom Props with Northworks Lab and all the forums here. Today we have a blaster smorgasbord, pretty much. This is a this is going to be a kind of a quick overview of the <laughs> six blasters that I've done for one person. Um, it's going to be a mix of different things and I'll describe each one as we go. But let's start off right away with the first one is the Muppet Show Blaster. Or the Dagobah blaster. So basically, this is the one that it was a resin stunt cast from the A New Hope Hero, and then uh, greebleed up and had an M19 mounted on it and cast, and they made a whole bunch of these uh, different kind of variants for stunt work and stuff like that. And it was also the one that Mark Hamill took on the Muppet Show uh, as Luke Skywalker. So here you go. Here you see um, this is a. Field Marshal kit, a Denix, um, with all of the, all his parts. So it's a replica M19 uh, Denix with bull barrel. Um, even though it looks pretty simple, there's still quite a bit of work to put, to do it to it to, to get it to go. And I did the, uh, I faked the uh, break in the mount here and put some screws in there to fake the uh, fix. So this is a, uh, general approximation now i don't know how this is coming off as can on camera this weathering here i tried to um put the same weathering marks that are on the, the prop the original prop because it was just white resin it was spray painted black and silver um so i kind of kind of wanted to do that and i toned it down a bit as the owner saw this it was, it was very white at first so now it's kind of um it's got a dusting of black over it but it does have all of the uh new hope hero markings serial numbers and stamps and stuff that kind of um, go with that since it was cast from the original. So there's the uh, the Muppet Blaster. All right, moving on. Now you've seen this one before. I did a video on this one. This is the um, Han Hoth. This is the one that uh, I did this a few months ago, um, but uh, it's just been sitting here waiting to go together with all of its brothers or sisters however you want to put it. But this is the super accurate Han Hoth on an MGC um, that I did using a real M19 scope, or real M32, M32, M19. One of these has an M32. Anyway, um, so real V8 parts and all that stuff, and this is it. So this is that same one that you saw in the other video. Then, Let's move on. What do we have next? Okay, we have a Luke ESB. So Luke Empire Strikes Back. Um, this is, the rest of these are all on Field Marshal's new one-to-one um, -one Mauser replica. So if you haven't seen the other video, we worked really hard. Many people worked really hard over the years to try and make this happen. But it finally happened. Field Marshal got a Mauser, scanned it, and replicated it perfectly. So this is one-to-one -one accurate on the outside, of course, to a real Mauser. Um, and, of course, none of the inner parts will interchange or anything. And most recently, he got walnut wood grips, machines, and scanned from his original walnut wood grips from his original Mauser. Um, and so they fit perfectly, and they feel exactly like real Mauser grips. Uh, they're excellent. They feel perfect. Um, and as for this Luke, uh, we don't really know what the serial numbers are. So I made my own serial number up and I carried that serial number over to the different parts. So one, five, seven, three, four, seven for this one, uh, three, four, seven matched here on the hammer, on the, um, locking frame and the frame here, all those serial numbers match. Um, that's something I do. That's not something field marshal does. Also the new type safety as well. I also fire blue all of these parts, all the parts that are fire blue on a real Mauser. I do that as well. So the trigger, the uh, safety, the uh, in fact, this whole slight sight slider is fire blued, and then they uh, polish off the top so you can see the numbers with the contrast. Um, the sight slider, the slider lock, uh, the the extractor, the the bolt bolt uh, stop. All that stuff I do fire blue. Oh, and also the uh, latch here for the lock frame. Um, so I do all those fire blue 
uh, what I do. And another thing I do with Field Marshal Mausers is I change out uh, almost all the springs. Not every spring, because I haven't found a better hammer spring yet. Um, but this one is still pretty good. Uh, I do all of the springs. I change the bolt spring, especially, is very strong. This is like a, a real Mauser bolt. It's very strong. I change the, uh, the sight spring that's under here. I mill a little recess for a larger spring and a little thicker gauge, and so that doesn't. That's not as floppy. And then I change the. Um, the trigger spring, so the trigger spring has a little bit more um, resistance to it. Uh, the only other thing I'd like to do in the future is figure out a stronger trigger spring or a tr stronger hammer spring, but these are pretty strong, uh, strong enough anyway, for, for you know, farting around. This is basically an adult fidget spinner. Um, but, so I change all those springs. I also change the tension on the safety to be like a real Mauser. So it's not going to be floppy floppy. It, it goes into these detents nice and strong, just like a real Mauser. This feels exactly like my real Mausers. Um, so those are some of the changes I do. This one is uh, a real M32 scope. M32 and M19 look exactly the same on the outside. Exactly. The only difference is the reticle on the inside. Um, so we don't know exactly which ones they used for these anyway, so it doesn't, it's fine. Uh, that's pretty much it. Oh, the other thing you have to do was when you get these, so Field Marshal's Mauser replica has the entire barrel length replicated. Now, if you wanna do this right, an ESB needs to be cut exactly after the, um, the front sight, not the full length. Otherwise you have your stuff too long. So I cut it down to the correct length, and uh, unfortunately his, uh, his barrel drill is not far enough in. So I have to pro, you know, uh, mill into the front of the barrel to give a barrel recess and then recrown it to make it, look, make it look real. So that's another extra step on the ESBs that's kind of a pain in the butt. But uh, however, it, it ends up looking really good and perfect. In fact, I had this sitting out with my live fire and I mistook it for my live fire. <laughs> okay, moving on. We have the Greedo Killer. Now this one, this is kind of a uh, idealized Greedo Killer. Uh, the real Greedo Killer was an MGC, MGC base. And, but, but the MGC is close enough to a real Mauser that the proportions work. So this is the, the Mauser replica, but instead of fire bluing all these parts, I did it like an MGC and just did them all gun blue. Um, this is a Field Marshal mount kit with a Solos hold um, front grill, a real M9 flash hider, and a real compact super 4x31. Now, this 4x31 is correct in all the proportions, but, uh, it has some inaccuracies. These things are super rare in any case, so just to find one is uh, hard. But this one doesn't have the correct windage knob base. The other one has kind of a slant, and these are stand a little bit prouder. Um, and this part, the focus lock ring, the neural is the spot places. There's a little bit more barrel, and then the neural is there. Uh, that's pretty much it. That's the difference. But otherwise, exact proportions, exact length, all that stuff, it's the same. So there's not really much to see on the other side here. Uh, it was pretty plain. But again, like all the others, all the others, uh, Mauser ones, I did all the springs, of course. Um, made it feel like it's supposed to. And that's about it. So that's the Greedo Killer. A big sucker okay so I got cut off and so this is the uh, my new favorite this is the Han Solo Return of the Jedi stem bridge version um, so the stem bridge is was the live fire uh, Return of the Jedi blaster that Harrison Ford used on set in um, California in the Redwoods so all the outdoor uh, bunker scenes where he's firing it 
they use a live fire so that he, in fact, in the book, Making of the Return of the Jedi, I believe that there's a, some, some, uh, somewhere in there it says something about uh, how he wanted to have a blank firing gun so that he had something to react to or act with properly. So anyway, uh, that's this. So after getting some pretty good um, pictures of it, I kind of might, I have never seen too many of these or actually maybe none except for maybe uh, Marcus uh, had one, I believe. And the reason might be because it's obscure and also there's not very good reference of it that's public out there. And um, these grips, which are these Mauser grips have been checkered and those aren't something naturally occurring with Mausers. Now you see some rubber Mauser grips that have a crest on them, uh, but the original ones for this stem bridge are original Mauser grips that look like they've been sanded down and then rechecked by hand because you can see the lines and the checkering cut into the astutions, the brass pieces. And um, it's just one of those things. So at some point in its history, I don't know if Stembridge Armory did that or somebody else did it before it got there. You know, they're, they're pretty old. They're World War I guns. Um, at some point, it got checkered. And so that's probably one of the reasons why most people don't do this. Now, the other reason is, it, I don't know why it doesn't get a lot of um, attention because this one probably has the most action out of any Han Solo blaster in, in the movies. Uh, he fires with a crap ton and kills a lot of stormtroopers with it compared to A New Hope where you see him use it in one scene when they're lo running from the stormtroopers on Mos Eisley. And in Empire Strikes Back, he shoots the cave worm in the mouth, and then uh, he fires at Vader. Uh, that's it. And in that one scene, it's both a Luke and a Han that are being used. So this one is the most used, got the most action, did the most kills. So I, I don't. I guess more people should really pay attention to this one. It's kind of funky looking, but this is one of those ugly ducklings that um, once you get it in hand, it's kind of a lot, it's kind of a lot of its own charm, and I think it's really cool. I used to really kind of think about these as the the redheaded stepchild. No offense to redheads, my mom is one, was one, and uh, but uh, you know it's one of those things that I don't think many people really paid much attention to. But for some reason, it's kind of quirky and cool looking, and I, I really dig it. Um, but so this is the an accurate mouse. So this was probably the best representation of that blaster because it was a real Mauser, and. It is. It still exists. It's in a pri in private hands today, and uh, I was lucky to get some pretty good reference of this to do some small details that uh, make it worthwhile. But Field Marshal also had a picture that he got from someone. I don't know who, but he was able to replicate these grips pretty much dead on. Um, he did the brass rings here, which is new uh, and perfect. This is what they are. Um, the brass tip to the scope, you got the Stembridge flash hider, and of course the Greeblies on the other side, which these are like, uh, these are a little bit different from the other Greeblies. They're just, they were machined pieces. They weren't real V8 pieces and they had just had a flat recess there. Um, and this was just a, uh, just a piece of, just a piece of metal that they glued on. They didn't do any machining like they did on the MGCs. It was just, this is blank. And then they just glued this little piece of metal on here. And that's it. Uh, pretty straightforward. Like the others, this is, uh, I've done, done all the things that I did to the others. Uh, change all the springs out. It's got very strong bolt spring. Um, the detents for the safety is like a real Mauser. Uh, but it doesn't do anything other than just, you know, you can still use it however you like but it's fun to uh, play with and all the fire blue parts, of course. And the finish of the flash hider I did like the original, which is just basically aluminum with some overspray on it. So um, while it seems simple, there's a bit of work to go. Now this is the only one with a full barrel. The rest have all been chopped. So there it is. So there's the uh, Stembridge Han Return of the Jedi, and we're about to move on. 
Last but certainly not least is the Han A New Hope Hero, the one that started it all. This is uh, the ultimate edition of with a real Mauser uh, replica, a real Hensolt scope, the Field Marshal mount kit, Field Marshal bull barrel, Field Marshal's flash hider. So um, this is about as good as it gets, depending on your point of view as far as the mount. Um, you know, there's Todd's, there's DEC, there's Field Marshal. They're all very, 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 very similar. Now, the Field Marshal is the only one that has the offset uh, mount holes to give the correct positioning of uh, how the crossbar sits in proportions on the sides and everything. But here I use my stencil kit, of course, and this was my very first Hensel. This was the, the first one I ever got from um, Mr. Sparkle on the RPF. This one had a long front uh, lens ring, lens retainer, and I machined it down to be the correct size, but it the one of the rare things about it, it is a Hensel uh, Wetzler Dial 3X, and it does have the exact perfect knurling for the windage knob, but it has the text for the, uh, the, uh, the scope on the other side. So otherwise it's perfect. And, um, the owner asked me to do the scratches on the uh, scope. So I did I kind of hemmed and hawed about that. It's kind of like, Oh, I really don't want to mess with the real scope, but at the same time, why not? It's super cool. Let's do it. And so I went ahead and did the most, uh, not everything, the rest of it's all original, but uh, the three main scratches here and the little cat scratches in the back and those, you know, those are added. So I also added the serial numbers to the Mauser. Now we don't know what the original first two digits were of the serial number for the lower or the upper. And in fact, the lower definitely wasn't a match for the upper because the upper has been used in other movies, but the lower was a different lower. Um, so I, this is idealized in the, in the sense that you start with the number you do know, and then I carry that over to the bolt, carry that over to the hammer, and then made up two more digits for the, um, lock frame and the lower to match. So these are all matched to this particular gun. This is the serial number for this one. Um, but, uh, accuracy wise, we don't know what the numbers were for the, the lower or the other parts. They could have all been interchanged for all we know. Um, but we do know the upper was a 2813. So this is a 2813 and then the rest. So like the other ones, um, all the springs are changed. Uh, for some reason, this one particular safety was machined quite differently from the others. Let me show you what I'm talking about. That bevel there is a little bit more pronounced on this one and I when I saw that in the batch I was like oh well, that matches the hero perfectly so that that one even matches well I don't know if that was an accident in machining because it's different from all the others all the others are almost exactly the same but this one is the correct uh profile so anyway that one bonus um what else magnetic sight Greedley. Not that it needs to be, because you're not taking it off, you can't fire or anything, but it's just, it's easier to put on there and take off if you don't like it. So there it is. Um, real reed tomtit cylinders for the uh, for the grill here, made out of three pieces. These suck to do, um, they're no fun. They take a lot of time and to glue them all together and to cut them up and cut them up properly. And one goes this way, the other one goes that way, and then the other one goes the other way and you have to cut one with too many fins and then, oh my God, it's just, it's a pain. But, um, okay, so, so I got cut off again. Um, one of the things I wanted to point out was that, so on this one, I had a real, I, I collect Mausers, so I had a lot of real extra parts. And um, I had a, well, I don't have a lot of these. These are pretty rare. But this one being a real Red 9 sight, um, I had an extra. My Red 9 has one, so I didn't really need it. So, the owner wanted me to put this on here and just so you can see um, a real sight will of course work it fits it's just very very difficult to put on because the spring on these is super 
duper strong because you don't want it flopping around when you fire the gun. Um, but uh, it's here, it's real. The original fire bluing is still there on the uh, slider part and you can see underneath a little bit of the fire blue there as well but it's a lot of pitting and uh, 100 years of age. So um, anyway, these fit. They're just really hard to put on and very, very expensive. So you can do it. I don't know if you really need to. Field Marshals is very good. In fact, uh, here I'll show you the difference. These are perfect replicas to a thousand meter sight slider. So uh, please don't feel the need to go out and hoard these or buy them. Uh, this is perfectly doable and it looks exactly the same. And he, in fact, the field marshal ones, I don't know if you can tell, but the numbers are engraved, but they were modeled specifically after his real gun. And one of the cool things is each one is different. The five here doesn't match the five there. And the two here doesn't match the two here. The three doesn't match the three. They, I don't know if they did those by hand back in the day or if they just had a set number of dies or what, but they, they were funky and, uh, each one of the numbers is different, so it's kind of interesting. Anyway, uh, that's, I think, about it for this one. So, there is the ultimate uh, hero replica with a real scope, real sight, real tomtit cylinders, awesome wood grips. Uh, the flash hider is modeled from a real one. I mean, this is pretty hard to beat unless you're doing a live fire, which... You know, uh, now that this is available, I wouldn't really recommend doing a live fire unless you just really want to have a firing a gun because this means you don't have to... Um, making a live fire is extremely difficult, especially to make it reliable and safe. So I recommend if you really want the real deal, uh, get this. This is the next best thing without having to deal with all the baloney with a real firearm and then having to hide it away all the time because you can't just leave it sitting around. Um, on your display. So anyway, uh, this is it guys. So thanks for watching. Long video, but uh, hopefully it was worth watching.